Hi guys! Today we are back in my garden and we are going to talk about the Olea europea, commonly known as the olive tree. Now this is actually a plant that is quite hard to maintain here in the southern parts of Sweden because we have a quite a cold climate. Now uh, people down in Spain and Italy uh, in the Mediterranean uh, they don't have that problem and can have this plant actually in their garden. Now we can't. And as usual, we're going to divide this up into four parts. The purchase, the planting, the placement, and the care of the plant. So if you want to skip forward, you can. Now, starting with the purchase. Uh, when you go out and buy your olive tree, uh, there is one thing that differs from when you buy maybe a hibiscus. And that is that it's, you can't quite knock the pot off of the plant because if you do that, the whole thing is just going to collapse. And that's because usually the Mediterranean plants are planted in a quite a heavy type of soil with a lot of, um, lot of clay. So if you knock the pot off to look at the roots, the, the clay is going to separate and uh, just fall apart. So then you're going to have to stand in the pot in the shop and try and replant the olive tree. So you have to look at the olive tree as a whole. How does it look at the leaves? Now the leaves should be uh, light green and underneath they have a little silverish uh, color on, it, on them. And also it should be quite a lot of leaves. It should be quite thick. Usually you buy it in a shape like this, in the shape of a ball. Uh, and it should be really, really thick. When you have bought your olive tree, it's time to put it down somewhere. And uh, like I said, here in the southern parts of Sweden, it's best to put it in some kind of a pot because it's not going to last during winter if you put it down in the ground in your garden. So you need to be able to move it around during the seasons. Uh, when you plant it, you shouldn't plant it in a clay soil. Like I said before, the, the pot it comes in has quite a heavy type of uh, soil uh, and that is actually preferred when they are standing in the greenhouses growing up. However when you replant it in a bigger pot it's my experience that you should use some kind of normal, uh, normal um, uh, plant soil that you can buy in the store. Now always use a premium kind they should should cost maybe about six euros for 20 liters of so uh, for 60 liters of soil so six euros for 60 liters of soil uh, if it's too sh too cheap the olive tree is not going to like it so please buy premium soil the other way you can do is that you can actually plant it like i have in pumice or volcanic rock like this. Now I'm not going to tell you about this right now but we have another video about it so please check that out if you want to know how this works and why it is four times better than normal soil. Uh, you could also plant the olive tree in some sort of self-watering container or self-watering pot. And we also have a video about that, so please take a look at that as well. Um, a self-watering pot is actually the best thing you can do uh, because it makes it easier for you to, to maintain and, and uh, water and give it nutrients and so forth. So look at the video we have. Now placing your olive tree somewhere in the garden uh, is actually quite easy because you have to when we are here in the southern parts of Sweden we have a in the summertime we have approximately 20 to 25 degrees Celsius in the daytime and about 15 degrees Celsius 
in the night time so it's not that hot but the olive tree likes it hot so you need to put it somewhere where it can get as much sunlight as possible so uh, and uh, preferably even maybe next to the house next to your house or next to some kind of wall because the wall is actually going to suck up some of the sunlights uh, and get warm during the day and is then going to reflect that warmth back to the olive tree during the night so it makes that it makes the the olive tree warmer when it's really cold so a lot of sunlight and a lot of warmth as much as you can give, give it uh, with that said you can actually move it around it's not that sensitive uh, so you you don't have to have it in the same place all the time you could move it around during the seasons but think about the light as much light as possible and by moving around of course I mean when it is in a pot not repotting it all season just moving it around inside the same pot so taking care of the plant now the olive tree is quite easy to take care of there are a couple of things you have to consider first of all since we uh, are in the south southern parts of Sweden and it gets cold during the winter uh, we get uh, below zero degrees Celsius uh, almost the entire season at least uh, in the evenings and in the night uh, so you have to move it inside and by inside I don't mean inside of your house because there it's too warm you have to keep it somewhere maybe in a glass house a greenhouse or uh, some sort of some type of uh, conservatory uh, that sits next to your house uh, and what you need to give the plant is actually we, we call it uh, it's frost hardy and by that it means it can take to go below zero degrees a little bit but not during a long period of time so you need to see to it that in the winter time uh, maybe where you put it has approximately 5 to 10 degrees Celsius uh, there are no worries if it goes below zero a couple of times when it's really really cold but it should be over zero degrees uh, most of the winter and when you take it out in springtime first of all you have to consider that if you put it in a conservatory uh, already in uh, February you're going to get quite warm inside of the conservatory as soon as you get a more uh, a lot more sunlight it's going to get warm in there so you have to start watering it during the coldest parts of the winter you actually maybe need to water the olive tree twice so uh, here in uh, where, where we are in the southern parts of Sweden it means that from December until February I only have to give it a little bit of water maybe two times so not much when it's about around zero degrees it's actually not drinking any water water but when spring is coming or the Sun is starting to come out and the conservatory starts to get warm it needs some water now the difference between a olive tree and maybe a uh, palm tree like the trachycarpus which we have another video about is that you cannot you can't start to water the olive tree uh, like you water it in the summertime which means that you can't give it a lot of water in the same time this is because the roots have to uh, get used to the water again if you give it a lot of water the roots are going to rot and die and the tree is just going to lose all of the all of its leaves but if you give the, give it a little bit of water maybe uh, two to three times a week just a little bit of water instead the roots have a chance to get used to the water 
Uh, and when you when it gets time uh, when you have a approximately 15 degrees Celsius during the day you can start moving it out of the conservatory however if you move it out directly into the sunlight it's actually going to burn it's the same thing as with the water you have to take it out a couple of times uh, maybe uh, two, three hours a day for a couple of days so that it can get used to the sunlight. And when you have done this, there are no worries because it's used to the sunlight and it can stand outside all of the uh, summer. So two things to summarize. It has to get used to the water again. So water a little bit at a time. In the start of the spring and then when you move it out see that it really gets used to the sunlight before you put it outside and leave it outside how much water should you give at early spring when it's not used to the water well give a little bit of water say uh, as much so that you can see that it goes through the pot it should, there should not sit any, any type of water in the bottom of the pot. So, uh, and make sure that it dries out before you give it some more water again. So when you have put out your olive tree in the garden and the summer season has started, it's actually time to prune it. Uh, and uh, the good thing about the olive tree is that you can cut it with a scissors or you can cut it with a uh, mechanical uh, hedge cutter if you want to. I always cut my olive trees with a normal scissor, some kind of scissor, to make as a, uh, to make a uh, nice clean cut because the mechanical hedge scissors actually cut some of them off and drag some of them off, uh, which not always looks as good so I cut it with the scissors and um, when you cut the olive tree I'm going to show you here last season I cut the olive tree right here what happened was that it divided into two new branches then I cut it again and it divided into two new branches so it's going to get thicker and fuller by itself. Each time you cut one branch you get two new branches. And this is good for you because that means that if you should lose a lot of uh, leaves during the spring, maybe you have given it too much water and it starts to fall off, when you cut it you are going to get a new full and thick crown again and you can make it a round shape. Um, how hard should you prune it? Well, that actually depends on the size of the plant. Now you should take it into almost the same size as when you bought it. So maybe a couple of centimeters larger than where it was the year before because you want to make it bigger in slow, slow motion. <laughs> it has to grow quite slowly thank you uh, now it's going to flower if you have put it if you have done everything I told you now it's going to flower and uh, this tree actually flowered for maybe a month ago and it has white small flowers all over the crown uh, there was so much of it that my wife actually thought that uh, on the ground around it that it was the volcanic rock that laid around it but it was the flowers that had bloomed over and fall to the ground so it was completely white underneath now the problem for me in the south of Sweden is that we don't have it warm enough uh, so I prob this year I probably will not get any olives out of this tree because now we are in the middle of August and this is only how far 
the olives have come. Uh, now, if we are really lucky and get, and the frost is not coming until maybe December, then maybe I can get some olives out of this. Uh, but one way is, of course, that you can move it into a greenhouse uh, and add some warmth to it and uh, prolong the season for a little bit. Then maybe you could get some fruit out of it. During the summer, during the, the season of the plant, so to speak, you, uh, you have to water it regularly. Uh, and by that I mean that the soil should never dry out completely. It should always be a little bit moist. So you can use your fingers to feel how moist the soil is. And when it starts to dry out, you water it again. Or, as I said, you can put it in a self watering container or self watering pot instead uh, and that will keep it a little bit moist all the time so that's quite easier uh, and you should give it nutrients during the summer uh, and also do that regularly this plant I actually water once a, once a week approximately once a week and every other week so every two weeks I add some nutrients to it so it's quite a it's a plant that wants quite a lot of nutrients if you forget to give it a lot of nutrients you're not going to get a lot of flowers and you're not going to get a lot of fruits or olives on it so don't forget the nutrients now which type uh, doesn't really matter you can go out and buy the cheapest kind of nutrients you can in the store and use that I prefer to mix my nutrients with the water that I give the plant but there are many other types of nutrients that you can do but don't forget it and that that's important thanks for watching guys uh, I hope you've enjoyed this small video about the olea europea or the olive tree if you have any questions please don't hesitate to give us give it to us in the commentary section and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you can uh, get a notice every time we put up a new video. So that's it for now. Hej då!